Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And I'm going to say this is the second part of one longer video. The first part of the video, which we put up probably before this one, was Ghostbusters 2016 and how nobody seems to be talking about it now. Uh, with the new Ghostbusters. In a negative way. Like, in a negative way. The journalists, yeah. the journalists are out there screaming about 2016. Yeah. And now it seems like they're trying to do some damage control with Star Wars. Because the two movies that I would say were the most polarizing in the quote unquote pop culture wars, the culture wars, would be Ghostbusters 2016 and The Last Jedi that came out in 2017. And there were all kinds of narratives formed by activist journos mm -hmm. about audiences and fandoms and everybody's sexist who doesn't like these movies and your bigots and some of your actual, actual Nazis. I mean, there was that uh, rewriting Ripley podcast or whatever that was dedicated to drawing all these Oh, lines. yeah, these conclusions that they were saying all, all these the conclusions wasn't even true. That, yeah. that if you don't like The Last Jedi, you're probably on your path to being a Nazi or some stupid, crazy you're stuff Republican like that. Republican and all this other stuff. Yeah, yeah it yeah. was ridiculous. Can't just like, yeah, I don't like it because I don't like what they did to Luke Skywalker. I mean, that's that that should be enough of a criticism right there. But it was also the people behind the movies, the people working at Lucasfilm that helped perpetuate this, that Star Wars fans who didn't like it are sexist. You're sexist Star Wars fans. Well, Star um, Wars did this again, though, when they had the Obi-Wan show coming out and there was a thing about Reva and people were like, you know, asking questions like, well, what's up with this? Well, you just hate women. You hate black women. You're sexist. Oh, yeah. they got all kinds of sexism attacks. And I was like, I'm like, and racist attacks. And it's kind of retreat on racist attacks. I'm like, I... Well, I'm not saying it didn't happen, that there weren't probably a couple people that maybe said something. The right. majority of people did not. But the majority of the articles you saw spread around were Star Wars fans are racist and sexist. And, and you know, if you don't like these things, it's because you're a terrible person. No, it's because why the fuck is little Leia in Obi-Wan's show when it's supposed to be about Luke and Obi-Wan? Yeah, it made no sense because... And who the hell is Reva? Who the hell's Reva? You know, Leia didn't even seem to know who the hell Ben Kenobi was in The New Hope. It yeah, was, it didn't you know, make Luke any sense him. because you're deliberately, and it was clearly going after agenda then over, um, you know, what would make sense. And that's what we'll call it out. But you're just a terrible person who's attacking, you know, this actress or that actress or whatever. And it's like, all I said was I didn't like it. I didn't say jack shit to the actress. So, yeah, and again, we had, you know, the articles like this one from Collider in 2018. J.J. Abram calls out sexist Last Jedi critics as being threatened by female leads. You know, and, this is what pisses me off. Okay, like, no, this on. is what pisses me off. And I'm sure people that aren't white have the same feeling about, like, with the Reva situation and all that. This is what pisses me off. I am so fucking tired of hearing that you don't like strong women, so you hate it. And it's because of sexism. Because, you know what? I'm a woman, and I'm so fucking tired of being told that I'm a sexist whatever because I don't like a movie. I know people that are, are, are not white that get told they're racist because they don't like something. It's It's lazy. It's lies, it's bullshit, and it's this mentality of these idiots who cannot fucking think for themselves that all they can do is parrot back what the journalists say or social media tells them. But when you ask them to give you a specific reason, other than quoting what they've been saying as, 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 as fact when it's not, they cannot give you one. Because they don't have one other than they were told by a friend of a friend of a friend or that journalist said. And I'm just tired of it. Like, I'm already marginalized enough, thank you very fucking much. I don't need you telling me that I'm, you know, I'm a terrible person. I don't like women and, try, and stepping over me. Because there's a hell of a lot of women and a hell of a lot of people who aren't white who didn't like these movies either or these shows either, which is why they did so shitty. Whether it be Star Wars or the new Marvel or whatever, they're going down a, the flicking fucking cliff because people don't like them. Did you say the flicking I said fucking? Flick it. The, the flick flicking fucking fucking fuck cliff. Well, if you're lucky, you get some flicking before the fucking, but uh, and then you, you have to take it, and make it weird. You know what I'm saying though, and anybody who is in a position that you know that aren't white, straight, and male. I'm not picking on white, straight men. I'm just saying that they always try to blame I feel me. They targeted blame you for everything. But what I'm saying know, is it's all my fault. You cannot even be the things that they claim that they're mad about. You can be the identity of the whatever they're saying is not represented. You can be the the, the, the the person who's not white. You can be the female and you're still, you know, somehow the, the worst of the worst and you're still supposed to be something bad because they say you are and they decide to label you while claiming they're doing it for you. They're doing it to protect all the middle fingers. Fuck you. Wow. I'm tired of it. I'm sick to death of it. Well, I think I think a lot of people are. I think it's ending. I think it's ending out of necessity. I think it's ending because 
these companies, like we talked about with Ghostbusters and stuff, I wonder how much of the outrage was trumped, trumped up because of the, the studio, whatever, trying to protect the movie, being like, well, if we just call people who don't like our product bad, then if you want to be good. Oh, and they start out with the man baby tears and you're oh, in yeah, selling man baby. Yeah, that's yeah, what, yeah, I, I'm, okay, the He-Man show. That's something I'm seeing a lot too. Because the cry babies and the misogynists, and the toxic men who are, are threatened by by uh, strong females are mad about the show. Bitch, please. I didn't like Revelation either. And I'm a woman. So stick it up your ass and stop speaking for me. <laughs> There you go. That that's yeah. That's that's coming from. I mean, you have to make room for your you know past their head. It's already up there. <laughs> Use a little lube. You can fit anything in there. Um, I don't even know where I'm gonna go with this. All right. So so yeah, we're, we're you know we spent years enduring the name calling or whatever and being told that we were sexist, which of course is fantastic for your bomb line when you've got. People associated with these productions, right? Whether it's Star Wars or Ghostbusters or video games or comic books or whatever. When you've got them out there uh, telling the audience that if they don't like their product and they're they're the ones with the money, right? But if, if you don't well, like our product, you are a bigot, a Nazi, a sexist. Except for like, you know, like the people that are in charge of like Abrams or Ryan Johnson. Or, yeah, that's a bad you know, Kevin Smith or whatever. They're out there making these comments they shouldn't be. Um, but the majority of the bullshit actually comes from, I think, the journalists. Yes. Who and the, and the social media, you know, people who are like trying to be like they they, they got themselves into a fandom. Now they want to they want to gatekeep everything. Yes. They, you, you can't keep them out, or you're a terrible person. But after they're in there, they want to keep everybody else out. So they start these narratives that aren't true. You don't like what I like, and that's what's normally when we grew up. I'm sure most of you. I like this. Cool. I don't like it. That's cool, too. But hey, you know what? We both like this. Let's talk about that. You were allowed to not like or like what you wanted. It wasn't a personal insult to somebody who disagreed with you. These babies cannot take it. Like, when you're talking about children, childish, but that's not an insult to children. When you're talking about baby behavior, they literally cannot understand or take that somebody disagrees with them. So in their mind, to make, to make themselves feel better, they literally make up boogeymen and they label you as all these terrible, whatever they think is the worst thing in their mind, like a Republican. They label you these things to dismiss you and they feel okay about dismissing you. Well, because they can't handle that you don't agree with that. But like they cannot personally handle it. It's so freaking bizarre. I mean, it's it's legit mental illness. I mean, I've seen some like ment like a lot of these people are whether it's you know people working in comics or working in, at these different outlets or whatever. They're like legit mentally ill, but then they're also not very intelligent. They think they are. Like I'm a journalist. I've got I went to journalism goal. I went to journal. There, there's one. I'm not going to name names, but there's one guy that used to write for CBR that was constantly trying to dunk on the chuds, constantly trying to call I out name names. Hi, Anthony. <laughs> Constantly trying to stir up trouble on social media. I already media. knew who you met without even asking you. And the dude, if you read the stuff he says, he's not as smart as he thinks he is. Oh, he, he really, really is does not. think he's smart. But that's it. They thought they were smarter. But a lot of times, and, and you know, there was uh, the one um, comic strip, I think, that George Alexopoulos did. I think it was George Alexopoulos. Did, did the, the comic strip about how... You know, people come into a fandom, they've never played the game, they've never watched the show, whatever they come in, and then they just take over and basically kick the, the original fans out. And that's what happened here. I think in a lot of cases, a lot of the people that have come into these fandoms, I'm not saying they don't like the show or whatever, but a lot of them are like newer fans. Yeah. And they're like, well, we want this to be our space now, so get the hell out. I would say you know? the, like, the ones I think of the most for that are like Star Wars and D&D. &D. Oh, and then yeah. She-Ra. You know, those are the she ones I like, think about the most. Those are the about. ones I think about the most. But anyway, D and D I think is the worst. D and D is horrible, like that. But now it's biting them in the ass because all the old school fans are leaving, and the shit's not selling, and all, they're all starting their own game systems. But we and need stuff. to get to the point. About the Daisy point. Ridley. The point of this being now Daisy Ridley is coming out and saying that she doesn't think Star Wars fans are that sexist. So, not, so she's not wrong. She's not wrong. We'll talk about how she, I guess, was really, really nervous when she got the, the role of Ray and and J.J. Uh, Abrams was basically, you know, she had ulcers and everything because J.J. Abrams was like, this is the biggest thing ever. And if you blow it, you're going to roll. There's well, going to be so many people angry. I brought it coming from Abrams. Who's also calling out people. Yeah, but Abrams. Oh, he kind of blew it too. I thought, He absolutely you know? blew it. Ray could have been a good character. 
I mean, honestly, yeah. most of oh, I think so too. I think she started out okay, and then he ruined it. But uh, Johnson, you know, of course, you can track back the entire you know rift in Star Wars fandom and the fall off to with the last the Jedi. last Jedi. Like a lot of people were out. You were out after the Force Awakens, but well, no, I was willing to give a chance for Last Jedi because I thought the Force Awakens was too much and New Hope all over again. But the thing is, is that like, again, this is like Ghostbusters where you can look at the box office receipts. You can look at the sales. You can look at all the unsold well, that's just That's just toys. racist and sexist. You can't say that. You, I point that out all the time. And that, that uh, uh, racism. You can look at the lack of interest in Galaxy's Edge initially when people were. That was so funny. Yeah, you know, people were so upset. The, because, the Star Wars hotel that was based on sequel trilogy. Yeah, like all these stupid decisions. And the thing is, is what they did is they they were like, well, the, the problem's got to be you. You, the consumer, you don't like that uh, we change the the recipe of of Coke. It's all your fault. You just don't have any it's taste. Because you're a, a racist. Yeah, you're you're a racist. Can, no, could you imagine if they did New Coke today? Oh my God! If you don't like New Coke today, you'd be called a Nazi. They would literally call you a Nazi. Everybody who vote who, who drinks old Coke is a Republican. Don't you don't you understand the his? <laughs> yeah, right. Don't you understand the history of Coca Cola? It's problematic history because it's That's bottled right. in Atlanta. And yeah. and and Atlanta has a lot of racist roots, and they're probably were like slaves used in making Coke or something, even how, though it was after the, how the war. <laughs> how come there's more votes counted for the, you know, for who likes which kind of Coke than there were people that were actually voted? Well, that's just racism. Yeah, that's, they would. I'm, I, you think I'm, you think I'm being, but that is the same thing. It literally is the same thing. A company produces a product, and I know I hate to distill a movie or a game or a comic down to a it's product, what it is, but that's what it is. They produce a product that uh, does not align with the expectations of their consumers. The consumers revolt because they're like, hey, this isn't what we wanted, and it becomes the consumer's problem. But instead of just being like, oh, we're sorry you don't like that, we'll do better next time <laughs> to win back your your money, they they tell them they're a bunch of Nazis. Well, back in the day, they they reverse course. Now they double triple down on the stupidity, lose a lot of money, but it didn't blame everybody else. I never seen anything like it. It's like you want to lose money. I don't understand it. Well, they can't afford to lose money, and that's no. why I think we're seeing either people shutting the hell up about the Last Jedi, like even six months ago. And it's just like Ghostbusters 2016. Six months ago, we had all these articles all of a sudden about The Last Jedi. Oh, yeah, we pointed it out. Like, they came out of nowhere all of a sudden. Yeah, and the sexist Star Wars fans and rewriting Ripley was starting their shit again and all this. And now, all of a sudden, uh, we've got Daisy Ridley herself uh, giving a pretty good response, just saying she personally hasn't seen a lot of sexism in Star well, Wars. Well, they used to use that excuse, too, with women. Like, women are kept out of Star Wars. And I was like, I have been around Star Wars my entire life. I've been a fan of it forever. I used to sell the toys in college. I would go, you know, and I would deal with a lot of dudes all the time. And because it is predominantly a, a male franchise. I'm, people get mad when I say that. But that's just the reality. Um and I never was treated. Now, I mean, your miles may vary. I was never treated um, in a sexist, rude manner because I like Star Wars. Usually, it was like, "Oh, hot damn, a girl likes it too," you know. I that, thought like, it was that, pretty neon, hot. Neon was like, "Hot damn!" And Street Hawk too. And Street Hawk. She knew what Street Hawk was. And you knew what Misfits of Science was. Oh my God, Misfits of Science! And you're like, hot damn! I was anyway. like, <laughs> she is the hottest girl I've ever met. My lightsaber is ready. Would you? Anyway, go ahead. Anyway, uh, my lightsaber, my my plastic lightsaber. Yeah. Was ready. It was ready. For, for a fight, okay. Ready for a fight, that's right. Uh, ready to spar. Um, so she said, Daisy Ridley said, I think my take is things get blown out of proportion. Yes. And the interactions I've ever had with people have been nothing but wonderful and supportive. I've only ever been embraced, and I think we're going to make a great film. Now, she was- I don't agree with the great film. I don't agree with the great film. It, yes. But she's even saying, like, I haven't gotten a lot of this- backlash personally the kelly marie tran thing i think that was blown way the hell out of proportion then didn't it turn out that she was leaving for other leaving social media for remember. other reasons i just remember like i remember i didn't like the last jedi but i really like kelly marie tran and i was like people say they, were, they were saying people were being mean to her being racist and stuff yeah. and i just i just she's such a sweetie i just didn't understand it like i her, rose tico sucked but kelly marie tran is a sweetheart that that's the thing like people have to separate you have to separate the character from the actor and you can have somebody who's a, a great actor playing a shitty character in a shitty movie. 
You know, you can have somebody who's a shitty person, but they give a great performance and a great movie. And even though they're a shitty person, you kind of give them a pass because you're like, well, you know, I liked them in that movie. Uh, you know. Well, back to this. The person that asked her the question, though, the question they asked her, um, does it, do they have what they asked her? Scroll up and see, because no, they don't. But what basically it was, was they're talking about this the story that people are against Charmino Bay Chinoy because she's a woman, and that, but they're, this doesn't make any sense, because women have always been important, women are important Star Wars, and Kathleen Kennedy's a woman, and I'm like, yeah, it doesn't make any sense, because that's not what happened. She, when they saw what she had said, which actually, she's the one that seems to have a sexism problem, um, and people were like, this doesn't make any sense because she was out there saying, well, you know, finally, like, finally a woman's going to shape Star Wars. Actually, I don't think it was even her. I think it was the person interviewing her. Yeah. Finally, there's a woman out here going to shape Star Wars because she's the first female director, which isn't true. They had other directors that weren't the main director, but worked on these before, too. And I was like, that doesn't even make sense because there's already been a bunch of women. I mean, Marsha Lucas and all these other women who've been involved uh, with the with the with the movies and the shows and the books. Several of the books were written by women. Yeah. And everything since then, I'm like, that is, you know, a not really a valid argument. And they made that argument. They tried to make the argument here, and that's when she stepped in and said, you know, look, I don't personally see it. I think it's been blown out of the portion. Yeah. And now, look to to be fair. To be fair, and I'm going to be fair here, the 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 interview with uh, Charmaine Obeid Chinoy was not related to Star Wars. It was something that came up about mo a movie she made like 10 years ago. Right. But to be fair also, even up to recent times, she's, she's making, still doubling yes. down on that activism bullshit. So you know, you know that this is where she's going to be coming from. Now, whether or not Disney will let her go full activist on a Star Wars movie, I don't know. But I, I, I think there's something going on. I think because we're seeing it on so many levels. It's not just Star Wars. It's not just Ghostbusters. It's not just comics. And we're seeing a lot of people get laid off all over the place. I think that 2024 is the year that we course correct because the money is running out. I hope so. But I also think 2024 is going to be the year where it's all about the election. Because even on NBC News, if you looked at the top of the page, they already have a 2024 election button. Oh, yeah. You know, I think they're going to be so bit there. I think they're going to be so January. <laughs> because I think even with 2020 election, you had some stuff talking about, it, but everything turned to that. Like even yeah. pop culture, they weren't mentioning it much like they were for the year. And then after the year's over, they'll go back to whining. Well, that's true. Um, but it's interesting if anybody's left. I mean, I don't know if they're going to any of these sites are going to be left. But uh, she said she told the host on the Today Show that she hasn't read a script for the movie yet. So there, there is no script for this movie. But we don't the know. story, I've, I've been told the story is fantastic. It's going to be good, honest. But she's getting like $12 million or some ridiculous amount of right. money for it. I mean, so just, hey, you know what? I actually like Daisy Ridley as a person. She seems nice. Take the money and run. Take the money and run. You know, you, that that's fine there's no shame in that. And if the movie's dog shit, well, you still got $12 million. I, I think, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think that people didn't like the last Jedi. And I think the way it was handled is what is what has caused people to be where they're at now. And I'm not just in the last Jedi, but like with like masters of the universe yes. and with like you yes. know, star Trek and with like all these different franchises, the way it was handled led to where we are, because instead of being like, like you said, the new Coke situation, instead of mm -hmm. being like, people don't like this, it's not resonating with them. We need to rethink it and walk it back, which they tried to do with Rise of Skywalker. So they did try it that and it didn't work very well. But instead of the takeaway being let's not attack fans and if they had not attacked fans and then said, oh, you know, we hear you or something like that. I think it wouldn't have gone the way it did either. But they no. they set out attacking fans and right away. Okay, with Shira, for example, with the princesses of power, the right from the day one, the whole marketing campaign was to attack anybody who didn't like it, that, and that yeah, th yeah. that actually just made more hatred towards your product than if you had just not done that. So you generated your own hate. And then you yell about it. But you're the ones that caused it. You're the ones that kept perpetuating it. You're the ones that were going out there talking about men living in their, incel men living in their caves and all this other shit. You guys perpetuated the division because you were trying to, like, instead of admitting your product wasn't good, you didn't want to admit that maybe, because we worked hard on it. So instead, it's everybody else's fault instead of your own. But it was all squarely your fault to begin with. And when it's just like one or two people, you can say, okay, you know, they're just, they're just being hate-filled trolls. But... When it's the vast majority of people, when it's so bad that your every movie after and show after goes over, you know, off the cliff, and and like you know the Shira show didn't do that great, and then the He Man show, we you know what happened with that one, and people are telling you Star Trek, same thing, and they had to go back season three and try to fix it. Yeah, 
you got told over and over and over again, you kept blaming it on this vocal minority, but it was the silent majority who agreed with the vocal minority that you claimed. The people not watching your stuff, the people not spending money right. on your merchandise, the people- Proof is in the pudding, proof is in the numbers. Yeah, and that's at the end of the day, like you can ignore social media because I think we're starting to realize now, finally, it took people long enough that Twitter's not real, Facebook's not real. Why did this outrage- it can be magnified and blown out of proportion. Then you've got the journalists out there repeating it and then building entire stories around a couple of tweets that are probably the same sock puppet account or whatever. But what what uh, happens then is the studios, I think, were ingesting this and they were like, yeah, you know, look at all these bigots and trolls and Nazis. Well, what and it does is you got these people on Twitter, um, I would say mostly Twitter, that are really... <sighs> They're easily molded and they're looking for a fight at any given point in time. They're looking for, they're, they're looking to be outraged. To, they for, want yes. A cause. That ever, and then the thing is, we've all been there when we were younger. We all wanted something, you wanted to, something to fight for. These people take it to the, to the extreme, but they all wanted some kind of cause. And then you, you basically, you know, weaponized these people. So they went out. And then you hear like people will complain about something that we supposedly said that we never even said. Well, my friend said, or a friend of a friend said. Well, I was like that JK Rowling video. You were yeah, watching. my friend Sarah sent over something, and it was a professor. And this one person, like the way they presented it, well, what do you think about her bigoted stance? And he's like, well, what did she say it was bigoted? Well, what does bigoted mean? And then they went and like reread the tweet, and he's like, well, let's take a look at the tweet. What do you think about part of this bigoted? And it's like, well, they think they're, this is. And he goes, well, do you think that? Well, not really. And it's like, so you're just, you're, so when you think about that and you look at it from a standpoint of, was she wrong in this one comment? No. You know what I mean? It's just, it was really well done. It was like basically the how, it's learning how to think for yourself, not just believe it because someone else told you. Yeah. And that's it. And a lot of people were like, well, I heard that they eat babies. And I, I know. heard and that I'm they're like, and I'm like, we never even said literal, that. They are literal goose stepping Nazis because we, they don't like Star Wars. We were on the, game, we're on the gaming, like, or gamer gate. Uh, list. We I didn't even know what we game it was. There. I wasn't even there. I didn't even know what it was. We got now a lot of this. I'll tell you the truth. A lot of this bullshit has stopped because I think people are like, okay, one, I think they're either getting burnt out on trying to, you know, hunt down imaginary, uh, Nazis Two, um, people have grown the hell up because they might've started ranting about this shit when they were teenagers. Three, it turned out that it was all fake anyway. Um, you know, and it just, and also I'm going to be honest, there are a couple of lawsuits, defamation lawsuits. And I, I'm starting to think that people are, are being a little more careful. I mean, you talk about JK Rowling, she threatened to sue a guy on Twitter for calling her a transphobe, you know? And I think people are kind of like, well, if they're not actually transphobes, if they're not actually Nazis, maybe I can't actually say that without uh, repercussions. Plus you just look stupid. Yeah. But it's you like, know? I think it it's, it's just mentality. And um, I'll give Daisy Ridley credit because I, you know, that she's basically saying I'm not seeing it. And I think it's, Blood of proportion, and it is because I think you keep hearing that everybody just generalizes it as you don't agree with me, you hate it. It's got to be because you're a terrible person because I like it. And look, I've always said you are allowed to like it. I, I don't care if you like it. I'm not going to attack you for liking it. What I when I say oh hell no and step in is when people are out there attacking people, calling them names, belittling them, trying to dehumanize them because they don't like it. And and well, if someone was dehumanizing somebody for liking it, I'd step in too. Yeah, it's like you know you can like and not like something, but that doesn't give you the right to go and call people you know terrible things and try to associate them with terrible things so that it, you make you feel better about you know stepping on them. Because at that point, that's no different than the people you're you're you pick like saying if somebody's legitimately a racist or somebody's legitimately a, a, a misogynistic asshat, and the way they behave is they they believe that these people are beneath them and they want to step on them and everything because it makes them feel better about what, about what their belief is. How are you any different? Everything you're doing is the exact same thing, but you're saying you're doing it for those people. But you're doing the exact same thing. It's just weird. I think I think fandom fantasy attracts. Again, to go back, and this is not me being you know belittling it or anything, but I think it legitimately attracts people with mental issues, loneliness issues, insecurity issues, and they I think feel if they, they want to be accepted, and when they feel like they have some kind of acceptance, they don't. They're afraid they're going to lose it. Right. They don't like being challenged. They want basically they want a safe space. And, you know, I mean, fandoms can be toxic, but they've always, they've always been, I mean, I think it's been ramped up because of politics and stuff, but like, 
you know, people that, that grew up going to comic shops, like I did, you know, comic shops, whatever, there were always fights going on about, not like real fights or anything, but, you know, people arguing about, you know, superheroes or tabletop games or movies or whatever. It was just, it was always kind of part of the culture. Um, and I think a lot of newer people aren't used to that. They're like, well, if you, if you don't like my whatever thing I like, then you you must be a bad person. I think it's generational because I think these people have been trained on the internet. Like we grew yeah. up with the internet wasn't like every, everything and every you know anything. You and, got too many downvotes. You need to like right. literally kill yourself because you're, you're not liked. Yeah, right. And the thing you you did you drew uh, Mermista as too white. You should die. And I think that they're looking at it from that stance too. Like it's a different generation, it's a generational thing. And 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 these websites and these journalists and and they know how to weaponize. Yeah. And that's what they're doing is they're finding people that don't maybe have that. That sense of self isn't enough that they feel like, you know, they can argue or whatever, or they feel like I'm latching on to this, I'm glomming on to it because I feel like it represents me and people that are associated with it, you know, seem like they're more accepting in my mind. So I'm going to go hate everyone who doesn't like it because that means they they represent everybody who's mean to me. And that's not the I, case. I, they just, just hate the show or hate the uh, movie. Yeah, I think that's... Nothing to do with you. I think that's fair. I think there's a lot of displaced. I think there's a lot of displaced uh, anger because a lot of it you see is like, well, if you don't like this show, I like the show because to me it represents, you know, being LGBTQ plus or whatever. And and if you don't like the show, then you hate gay people. Like, no, that's a, quite a leap. I don't like yeah. the show because why is the horse singing and dancing now? And why are they having slumber parties in Shira? It doesn't have, you know, right. it's like that doesn't make any damn sense. Plus, I'm not the target demographic, you know. But um, I think we're going to see things change, at least on the surface. Now, do I think we're going to get a good Ray movie? No. no, I don't think we're going to. Do I think it could possibly get canceled? I don't know. But I think it was a huge uh, miscalculation on the part of Lucasfilm to double down on doing another Ray movie when people just are completely over the sequel trilogy. That being said, it is encouraging to see that at least Daisy Ridley is coming out, even if it's just for show. But she's coming out and saying that, like, no, Star Wars fans I've interacted with, they haven't been a bunch of toxic douchebags. It's been blown out of proportion. That being said, um, they better make her not say any words in the first movie. The second movie, they need to make sure she dies. And <laughs> yep. She's an insufferable bitch. Yeah. She's um, the entire time that she's grumpy and jaded and tried saggy to, tits. She tried to kill her something, you know, the relative, because, you know, her other Palpatine clone friend, because, you know, <laughs> that's what they do, and that's the only way to, to really show the, the depth of the of the Force and the depth of what a Jedi is. There you go. Um, there that's you the only go. way I think it's good. Yeah, there you go. Do do to her what they did to Luke. Basically, then, yes. Then we'll talk. That, yes. Put Our, a big X on her face at Lucasfilm, and we'll talk. <laughs> yeah, we're going to wrap it up. Yep. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Bye.